morning, church. If I could just invite you guys to come up to the front if you want to, uh, you know, just get a little closer as we praise and worship God this morning. So good to see each and every single one of you. Amen. Here we go.
we just praise you this morning, Lord, for all that you've done. For who you are, Father, in our lives. Lord, the best is yet to come, Lord, and we can't wait for that day where we see you, Lord, face to face, Lord. And I just pray, Lord, till then, Lord, that you would just um, continue to walk with us, Lord. We can't imagine life without you, Lord. We don't want to do it without you, Lord. So come and have your way, Lord, in whatever way, Lord Jesus. In the highs and the lows, Lord, come and have your way.
song to him. Praise his name. Sing your love song to him. Just pour it out from your heart without holding back anything, everything that you want to tell him. And you don't have the words for it. Just sing it out to him.
you know, as we sing, you know, about the reckless love of God, you know, this is a wonderful time as we are one week away from Passion Weekend, as we think about the reckless love of God, you know, what a, what a risky down payment that He gave His life so that He could have you and I. Even before we said yes to Him, you know, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us, you know, what an amazing love, you know, and, it's, and maybe the worship team, you know, just, as they continue just playing this song, you know, let's just let's just reflect, you know, as, as we enter Passion Weekend next week, you know, let's just reflect and be thankful for the love that God shows, you know, that He will leave the 99 for the one that strays away, you know, that He would, as the prodigal son, He would run when we come to Him. God, we just want to thank you, Lord, for your love, Lord God, that is so amazing, Lord, it is so undeserved, but yet, God, you gave your life away for us, God, so Lord, even as we meditate upon this love, even as we reflect upon your sacrifice, we just want to say thank you, God. And we want to say, God, we love you because you first loved us, God. We want to adore you and worship you, Lord, because of who you are and also what you have done for us, God. God, we are thankful for the cross. We are thankful for your sacrifice, God. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that, God, you didn't just say that you love us, Lord God, but you proved it and you did it and you went all the way for us, God. Lord, we thank you that, God, when we come to church, this is the kind of love that we are embraced in, Lord God, not based on how our week has been, not based on how we have performed, but, God, when we come as sons and daughters, we thank you that we come into a God who loves us unconditionally, God. We thank you for your love, God, and we embrace it, God. We enjoy it, God. We live in it, God. We abide in your love, God. We thank you. We thank you that this is the kind of Father that we serve, that God, we, we thank you that God, when we come, Lord God, we, we, we don't have fear, Lord God, because perfect love has cast out that fear, God. So Lord God, for whatever worries that people may come with, Lord God, whatever situation, Lord God, life may bring, Lord, as we come into your presence, Lord God, we lay it at your feet because we know our Father God, you're going to take care of it. Our Father God, you can see our needs and you will meet it, Lord God. You are the God who can work miracles when we need it, Lord God. You are the God who can break through, Lord God, in every situation. So God, we come to your house and celebrate. We come to your house and rejoice and give you praise because God, you are working on our behalf, Lord God. So we thank you. We love you and we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, let's praise God for what He has done. Come on. Amen. 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 Amazing, amazing seeing all of you here. And thank you everybody who's joining us online. You know, this is an amazing time. We can finally sing again. You know, we can worship God as, as freely as we can now. So let's give it our best shot every single weekend. Yes? Awesome. All right. You may take your seats. Thank you for joining us for praise and worship. For those of you who are online, thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. We are, we are one week away from Passion Weekend. All right. It is coming. It is coming. All right. Four more days and then it's Good Friday. All right. It's so exciting to be here. All right. And thank you very much for those of you who are joining us online from your living room, your bedroom, wherever you may be joining us from. Okay, if you are new, all right, and you're wondering, do you walk into a church or a garden, right? <laughs> Just want to assure you, you walked into a church and we are celebrating Passion Weekend uh, this year, right? As we talk about the gardens and conversations that took place in them. All right, so if you are new, all right, you are in a church, don't worry. If you are <laughs> viewing online, you are looking at a church uh, service this morning and we want to welcome you, all right? If it's your first or second time joining us here or online, all right, on the count of three, maybe just raise your hand if you're online, you know, give us a shout out in the comments, you know, and our host team members will have something for you, all right? So ready, on the count of three, one, two, three. Anybody here for the first or second time? Okay, I don't see any hands here. So uh, if, if you are here, on, uh, if you are here, if you are there online for the first or second time, all right, give us a shout out in the comments as well, and we want to welcome you, okay? Thank you so much, all right? So uh, we're going to continue worshipping God, but uh, in our giving this time. So what's going to happen is uh, the projectionist is going to help us with some QR codes. So we're going to give electronically in this season. All right, you can scan, giving your, your tithes and offering, uh, the mission fund that you've pledged, if you pledged or you want to give uh, freely, or the building fund. If you still wish to give uh, physically, all right, cash or check, you may do so. But at the end of the service, all right, ushers will have uh, offering boxes at the end of the hall after the service, all right? So we're just going to pray. We're going to pray for uh, this morning's offering and we just want to ask God to bless it, all right? 
Father God, we thank you that God, we can give. Lord God, I mean, we pray, Lord God, we are asking you, Lord God, to do more. Lord God, to do even greater, Lord God, with the offerings that we give, Lord God. We are asking that God, for a move of God, Lord God, a supernatural move, Lord God, be it, Lord God, through the staff of the church that God, this offering will finance, be it through the buildings, Lord God, that we are upkeeping, Lord God, be it through the missionaries that we are supporting, Lord God, that your love will move in an even greater way this year, Lord God, through the giving of your people. So, Lord God, we want to give cheerfully and expectantly, knowing that, God, our giving can impact lives forever. So, Lord, we thank you, we love you. In Jesus' name, we commit the offering. Amen. All right. So, as you open your banking apps and you want to do your giving, all right, why don't you put your eyes on the screen for this week's church news. Hey, church, welcome home. Here at Emmanuel, we believe that church is more than just a Sunday service. We are family and you have a place here. This is church news. Notice is hereby given that the 52nd Annual General Meeting of the Members of Emmanuel Assembly of God will be held on site. It will be happening on the 24th of April, Sunday, immediately after the English service at our Upper East Coast Campus, Level 4 Sanctuary. The AGM notice, agenda, and list of voting members have been posted at the Level 3 and 4 lobbies at the UEC Campus and on the door of the Everett Road North Campus. Any member who wishes to place an additional item on the AGM agenda should forward it in writing to the Honorary Secretary through the Church Office by 12 noon on the Sunday, 10 April. Any member who wishes to make inquiries or seek clarification on the proposed resolutions should forward their request to the Honorary Secretary through the Church Office at least 14 days before the meeting. With so much happening here at Emmanuel, you can keep up with us via our e thin found on our church website at www.emmanuel.org.sg or follow us on our social media platforms for event updates and more. That's all we have for you. Have a great service. All right, it's going to be an amazing week ahead and... Just some uh, reminders, all right? Some reminders. Okay, uh, as Passion Weekend is coming, all right? And you have uh, Mandarin-speaking friends, 
All right, you saw just now, uh, Reverend John Ng will be here over our Passion Weekend, uh, having multiple services over the Passion Weekend from Good Friday to uh, Easter Sunday, okay? So if you have friends that are predominantly Mandarin speaking or you need friends who, you know, who need healing, you know, uh, this is a healing and a revival meeting, all right, happening over the weekends. So you can connect them with our Mandarin service, all right, details of course are available on our church website for all the services that are happening there. Okay, and a second reminder, uh, this one is a bit funny that I'll be giving it, um, but if you might be new to church, right, and you don't know that we have a section that's reserved for uh, parents with children, okay, so that's the section over there, uh, my left back, uh, your right, okay, so uh, if possible, right, uh, if you have uh, children that are attending children's church or, you know, they can't attend, they're with you, all right, that section is reserved for you, for the rest of us, let's just cooperate and, you know, uh, reserve that zone for them. You know, however, of course, we are understanding, you know, you have special needs, you know, you, or you need, you need, to, need to be seated there for whatever reason, you know, just speak to our ushers, you know, we will definitely understand. All right, so let's have that conversation uh, with them. All right, if not, you know, uh, we can reserve that for the parents with children. And it's very awkward because after this, you will see, I also go and sit there. <laughs> okay, so, so those are, are the reminders, all right. So now we are in our penultimate week, all right, of our Gardens and Conversations uh, series. Okay, you know, we've been having conversations from the time of, you know, Adam. You know, you saw the amazing video just now, right? Let's give the, the team another hand for that amazing video. <laughs> you know, really, really captures all those critical conversations that happen, you know. Um, you know, from the Garden of Eden and this week we'll be going to the Garden of Gethsemane. All these conversations, you know, we really want to us to, to think and reflect. But, but more than ourselves, we want to have this conversation with our friends. You know, uh, if you follow our church on Instagram, you will see all the different, you know, conversation questions that we have been posting, you know, for us to really think about and talk about, all right, Passion Weekend with our friends, you know, and invite somebody to be connected with the love of Jesus. All right, so for this week, okay, we are in our penultimate week, all right, it's very exciting on the topic of obedience, all right, um, a, a conversation in the Garden of Gethsemane. We have our very own Pastor Stephen Ong, so let's welcome him as he brings the Word of God today. Thank you. Please be seated. When I was told that I, uh, you know, to come to share, test, I say not my will, but thy be done. Sister Jenny, thank you for this privilege and the honor to be able to come and share the word of God this morning. Indeed, the, the Lord's presence is here and can just feel His love just, uh, you know, just flowing out of His bosom to just filling our hearts. And so let's open our hearts as we enjoy His presence and have that little conversations wherever we are seated or you are at home. You know, just open our hearts and let Him speak and let us hear and listen. Amen, amen. Now today is Palm Sunday. Uh, it is the day that we remember Jesus of his triumphant entry into Jerusalem. You know, he was seated on the, on the donkey and on both sides of the road, people were waving palm, palm blanches or laying on the, on the floor the blanches and shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, which means save us, deliver us. But you know what? Palm Sunday is a foreshadow of the Resurrection Sundays in just seven days to come. Amen. Because no longer we will say Hosanna, Hosanna, but we will shout, Hallelujah! Amen. You don't sound excited. Because Jesus has won the victory over, life, over death and sin, He has set us free so that we can have life and life more abundantly. Can I hear Amen? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Indeed, we shout hallelujah because God has set us free. God has saved us from the clutches of sin and death. Hallelujah. Now, Palm Sunday, in essence, is Jesus' act of obedience, of going to the place that he would be our sacrificial lamb. That no one, no one can pay, can pay the penalty of our sin except the Son of God. We could not have the empty tombs if we do not have the cross. And we could not have the cross if Jesus did not willingly go to it in obedience to the Father. You know, obedience is one of those words that never sound fun. Who likes to be obedient? Yeah. Yeah, only my hands. 
you know, it is, it is something that kind of like going against the desire of our hearts. You know, when we have to obey, we feel that, oh, you know, you, you have restricted me, you have restrained me from doing what I want or what I love to do. But obedience is to choose life over death. If the red man's lighted up and you say, seems there's nobody and I'm on the, on the, on the hurries, and let me just walk across it. You know what? Next moment, the car will just come by. Obedience is choosing life over death. Mark chapter 8 verse 35 says this, For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But who shall, whoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall be saved. For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole wide world and lose his own soul? Jesus, obedient to his vicarious death on the cross, chose life instead. The text, Philippians chapter 2, verse 8 says this, And being found in the appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on the cross. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for your love for us. And even at this moment, Lord, we feel your love surrounding us, envelop us, O oh God, because you care for each and every one of us. You know us by our name. Whether we are here on site or there online, you watch over us. And you just want to have that love uh, conversations with us this morning. And we say, God, open our hearts and come freely into our hearts. Speak to us. We are healing. We are listening. Bless our sharing this morning. In Jesus' name we pray and all God's people say, Amen, Amen. Praise the Lord. You know, at the Garden of Gethsemane, actually there were two uh, conversations uh, recorded. One is Jesus with the Father and Jesus with His disciple. Uh, let's look at the first conversations, Matthew, uh, no, Mark, okay, because they are all recorded in the Matthew, Mark, Luke, you know. So let's look at Mark chapter 14, verse 36. Mark chapter 14, verse 36 says this, And he, Jesus, was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. Such a, a highlight, if I can put it, the life of Christ on earth in that short three, 33 years. You know, the Garden of Gethsemane is not a strange place. It is a familiar place for him and his disciples for they frequent often, usually in the dawn of the day, to pray, to seek the Lord. And here we see Jesus say, Abba, Father, it is a, an in intimate term to characterize their personal relationship with God. Jesus and the Father's relationship is one of a love relationship. You know, throughout the Gospels, you can read the, 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 the term, the uh, uh, quotes that Jesus make about him and the Father, such as, my Father and I are one. In the book of John chapter 10, verse 30. In the book of John chapter 5, verse 19, only does what the Father does. Again, in John chapter 4, verse 39, it says that my food is to do 
the Father's will. And right at this moment in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says, Abba, Father, once again proclaim his love relationship for God and the intimacy that he had with him. From, the, from Gethsemane to Golkata is an act of love in obedience. You see, Jesus was fully aware of his mission and purpose. He lived a very purpose-driven life for the 33 years on earth. He was intentional. He knew his time. And he has been living it for it. And so it's not about a fear, expression of a fear of, of going to, to the cross. But the agony of being separated with the Father when He will be on the cross. It is not about the pains, the, 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 the suffering that he, got to, he will be going through. It is about that the Father, for once, has turned His face from him. That is the cry. That is the conversations that Jesus was making. The separation of the Father. Church, this morning, even as we come to this point, God loved us. He loved us while we were yet sinners. He chose to die for your sin and for my sin. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. Whosoever believe in Him shall not die but have life. And then very interestingly, we look at the second conversations where, you know, Jesus came to his disciples, the, 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 you know, the three of them, John, uh, James, and Peter. And uh, they were asleep. You know, just before he, he left them there, he was saying that, hey, I'm, I'm in, in deep, you know, uh, uh, agony. Please pray with me. And yet, they couldn't even tell me that one hour and they fallen asleep. And the interesting conversation was this. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptations for the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. You know, this verse gives us hope. <laughs> Every time we say, you know, Pastor, I'm, I'm willing, you know. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. Lah. So, you know, bear with me. And if you look at chapter 13 of Mark, the last few verses was talking about watching. When Jesus was talking about his time, I mean, you know, his, uh, his, his time. And those of you who has the NIV version, the last word of chapter 13 was watch. Come, check it out. Now, watch is not about watching or analyzing, okay, what is the seasons now, you know, about the war, about the earthquakes, about the sufferings, and about the pandemic. It's not about this watch. The watch there is about watch our relationship with God. Least we will be tempted. Least we will fall into temptations. It is a reminder. It is an exhortation of our love for God. Must not be diminished despite what is happening around us. When times are good, we say hallelujah. But when times are bad, 
do we continue to say hallelujah? Or we say, oh God, oh my. You know, the reasons why our lusts ultimately have so much power over us is that we neglect our intimacy with God. When we are detached with the Father, we, are be, we will be engaged with lust. When our relationship with God is cold, you will find that we will have passions in our lusts. So much so that we will be easily fall prey to the enemy's track to estimate us, to bring us to our downfall. It is a choice of death to self and the life in the spirit. Intimate relationship with God brings us to know His will. Jesus said, but not my will, but yours. That relationship that Christ has with the Father enables Him to know fully well the Father's will. And sometimes we are seeking God. God, what is your will for me now? You know, what is, the, what is the path that I should choose? Which is the direction that I should go? Hey guys, if we have an intimate relationship, you know in the hearts of heart the will of your Father, the will of the Father in heaven. Maybe the will of our Father too, you know. Uh, anyway, sorry. Uh. This morning, you know, I was in the Mandarin service and, and this example came out. I thought it was a very good example. And happened that in this part of the sermon, I don't have an example. You know, there was an American lady missionary by the name of Lillian Hurst Trester, born in 1887. He was engaged to another minister and was about get, to get married. At the age of 23, I just found out, you know, he felt, she felt the call of God to go into Africa. Now today, some of us may, may hesitate to go to Africa. How about 18, eight, in the 1910? At the age of 23, just 10 days before her marriage, you know, she was engaged, just 10 days before her marriage, she called off the wedding. Against the family will, she obeyed the Lord and left for Africa. She gave up her happiness, you know, Chinese say, sing fu, you know, or the Korean say, I don't know how to say Korean, but if they every time says, ni yao sing fu, all right, uh, give that up. And later on in her memoir, she was saying that, you know, she said, God, you know, when I get married, I want to have 12 kids. Hi, guys, we are, we, are, we need to catch up. <laughs> but you know, at that point of her memoir, she had 12,000 children in her orphanage. She was titled Now Mother because she's the first woman to start an orphanage in Egypt. Yes, there will be sacrifice. Jesus sacrificed his own life to fulfill the will of the Father. Lillian sacrificed her life to fulfill the will of the Father that people often 
were being touched. This morning, as God poured forth His love, perhaps some of us are in the midst of making decisions. You are in the crossroad. And you ask, God, what is your will? Should I? Should I not? Let's get back to the basic. Let's re-establish that intimacy with God. And you will surely know the will of the Father. Obedience is the reflection of our intimate relationship with God. Let's continue. Jesus said, Yet not what I will, but what you will. Obedience is true worship. We praise God for a, an amazing time of worship earlier. We praise God for the giftedness and the talents of, of our people who knows how to sing and, 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 and play. I wish I were, you know, can sing that well, Scott. Good job. Yeah, yeah, it's a good job. <laughs> but worship is more than our singing. Worship is more than just our doing or coming to church. Worship is to place God first and of great importance in our lives. It requires the abandon of the cells or the denying of the self. Obedience is true worship as we esteem the worthiness of God over us, over ours. You know, sometimes we feel that we deserve certain treatments, we deserve certain rights, we deserve certain privileges. But God comes first as we truly worship Him. The object of true worship is God and not, the, and not subjected to the people, the circumstances, or the environments. You know, Jesus has every right to say no to the Father. I mean, He was sinless, yet He has to be crushed by the weight of the sin of this humanity. He has been a true friend, but in times of needs, these people fall asleep. He has been a good master, yet he was, be, be, he was being betrayed. I mean, seriously, if you, you and I were in that position, we would say, God, they don't deserve it. Correct? Thank you. <laughs> you know, why should I sacrifice my life? I mean, you know, why should I give up this relationship that I have with God for this group of, for this bunch of people? The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. First Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, which we are quite familiar with. Samuel rebuked Saul, says, Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice, and submission is better than offering the fat of the rams. We praise the Lord for this privilege to be able to offer sacrifice unto the Lord. But more than just a sacrifice, he desires a total submission out of a worshipful heart. King Saul has all the reasons or the excuses, so to speak. But what matters most to God is obedience. Sometimes we try to help God. Sometimes we try to play God. But hey, God is God. He knows how to manage Himself. 
And we need to put God in His worthy, in, in His worthy place in our life. You know, when we were, when we had raised up a team for Kobe in 1998, after, just after the Kobe earthquake, out of, I was a lay pastor then, out of my divisions, we raised up a lay team who will be willing to give up their job for one year and mine for two plus one year to go to Kobe to church plants. And my team went for uh, two years of language learning. Uh, I was lazy. I didn't go for language learning. That's why I only know Yai Yato. You know, uh, we geared up for these missions. And just before we set off, I was told that I will not be leading the team. It was, a, it was sure, f- I'm still human, you know. It was sure frustrations, agony, angry, and upset that the decision was made that I'm not supposed, to, I will not be going to with the team. You know, we were expecting Japan, you know, Japan. You know, cool weather, Japan. <laughs> a developed country. So we didn't make it there. And then just a few days later, pastor came and said, Stephen, you know, you are a businessman. Perhaps the business capital of India will be good. At that point in time, it was called Bombay. So it was from Kobe to Bombay, except that this bay has a lot of bombs. Yeah, I mean, it, it, at that time, uh, if you read the news, there's still bombing between, you know, uh, even up to now, uh, you know, uh, Indian and Pakistan's and things like this. You know what was my first expression to my pastor? Sorry, uh, call another person. I have responded to the call to Kobe, and since you all have decided no, so I think God has released me from these missions. It was such bitterness and anger. I thank God for a good wife. She says, let's pray. We pray. We pray. And God convicted our hearts that it is His will for us to go. You know, I have, I have all the reasons why I need not go. But I say, God, if it's truly, this is, you, this is you, I choose to worship you and not subject myself to the things of this world. We make that trip, praise the Lord, against my mother's will. And, but that's my mother's will, you know. I have the father's will. Uh, she made this statement, you know, you are a very res- irresponsible parents. Well, we went. Second part of the story later on. Uh. You see, obedience is the reflection of our intimate relationship with God. And second, obedience is the expressions of our true worship of God. We look at the next conversations, but this time I will go to Matthew chapter 26, verse 42. He went away again a second time and prayed, saying, My father, if this cannot pass away, okay, this is the second conversation, if this cannot pass away, he already knew, unless I drink it, your will be done. It is a statement of submission and surrendering to the will of the Father. But more than these two S's, it is a demonstration of his trust in God that he will take care of everything. Obedience is the leap of faith as we totally depend on God. Without faith, Hebrews 11 says, 11.6 11.6 says, it is impossible to please God. 
And very interestingly, uh, I found this uh, definition. Holman Bible Dictionary says this. Another New Testament word often translate, translated obey means to trust. The person's obedient response to God, to God's word, is a response of trust or faith. Do we trust God? You know, God loves us and He desires us to, to be like little children coming to Him and trust Him and believe Him and to know that He has all good things in store for His beloved. You know, sometimes we, we try to think how God is going to handle these situations that we are in. April 2020, we were in the circuit breaker. And I was doing very fine, very well. I fulfilled my lifelong dreams to serve God in full-time ministry. I was, the, I was in the executive team of the church. I was, you know, a lot of eye, right? But just give me this little luxuries, huh? I was the lead pastor of the Mandarin service in my church. And God said, son, I want you to step down from full-time ministry. Get thee behind me. You know, that was my first reaction. But you know what? God keep on just telling me and showing me that I realized that it is not the devil, but God was speaking. I mean, I have all the excuses. God, I'm doing your word. Not many people want to go full-time, you know. I give up my, my job to go full-time. If I were to step down, what happened to this? What happened to that? And very clearly, he, I heard him say, trust me. You know, the first time when I left my mother church to, to another church, not because I want to, at least I'm not church hopping, <laughs> but it was really under the direction of God. You know, God showed me it was a, a, a red sea moment because God just parted the sea and the children of Israelites just walked through it. No sweat. You know, the only person that sweat is Moses. But the people just walk through it, you know, have fun, you know, watching the fishes on the wall of sea. But this time round, God was telling me that, hey, it is not the Red Sea. It was the Jordan River. In other words, you need to step into the water and the water was to be still there you know, on the, in, the, in your first steps. And then on the second step, Perhaps you'll see the water dry up. You know, I was jokingly saying that, you know, there were four priests uh, carrying the ark. You know, if, if I'm the on the first two, uh, the front two, uh, I will be, why me? Thankfully, if I'm the behind two, uh, it was praise God, they go first. Do you know that the first two priests has to walk on water first, or walk into the water before Slowly, lo and behold, the river parted. And God was saying that you need to just walk there because I want you to trust me and not trust in your own human capacity. And I did that. And I did that to, to broke, broke a few people's heart. And I left. And today I'm here. Praise God. Thanks, Pastor Mark. You know, Mark. No, not, 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 not that Mark. <laughs> you 
you know, the, the text in the book of Mark, whether it's Mark, Matthew, and Luke, it brings out the whole idea that Jesus trusted his father. Despite of what is going to come, the agony of suffering, the agony of being betrayed, you know, the frailty of his body, you know, withstanding the, 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 the cruelty of the penalty and ultimately dying on the cross. He trusts his father. He trusted his father. And on the third day, he rose from his dead. Conquer over sin and death. In conclusion, obedience is the reflection of our re intimate relationship with God. It is the expressions of our true worship of God. And last but not least, the demonstration of our trust in God. You saw the R-E-D there? So when there's the red light, please don't cross. Because if we don't obey the rules or the laws, we get ourselves in trouble. How many of you play golf? None play golf here? Wow, okay. <laughs> you know, when, 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 the, when the school, you know, okay, how many of you are in school? In the school field nowadays, they fix up a red uh, uh, lights, you know. So when there's thunderstorm or lightning, the red light will, will be activated and all of us supposed to not be on the field. That is the warning to us. And this morning, once again, let us be reminded, obedience is the reflections of our intimate relationship with God. It is our expressions of true worship of who God is in our life. And last but not least, the demonstrations of our trust in God. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. This is the mark. <laughs> then calling the crowd to join his disciple, Jesus said this, If any one of you wants to be my followers, you must give up your own ways, take up your cross and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life and you will lose it, but if you give up your life for my sake, and for the sake of the good news, you will save it. Let us pray. Father, we want to thank you for this morning. Lord, again, reminded us to, of our relationship with you. And we pray, Father, that as your word began to just sink into our hearts, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will have the free reign in which area, in which area, departments of our life that needs to be once again be realigned. God, give us the strength to do so. This morning as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, you know, whether it's through the worship, let us to the word. Once again, God has reminded us of his love for us. The church in Ephesus was commended of their great works. But Jesus had this to say, you have lost your first love. As heads are bowed and eyes are closed and you say, Pastor, I want to love God. Not just superficially, not just outwardly, but God to establish the intimate relationship with you. That you come first that you have first place in my life. That your will be done and not mine. With the demands 
of the world, the cares of this world, sometimes we neglected our love relationship. And some of us are going on the spare tank. God is saying that, I love you. I love you. Draw nigh unto me and I will draw nigh unto you. He, want, he wants to re-establish that love so that you will know Him, so that you will walk in His perfect will. As heads are bowed and eyes are closed, whether you are here on site or on, online, you will say, Pastor, could you just pray for me? That this love of mine with God, for God, be so fire up. Be so fire up. That no one, nothing, can separate us. That I will be able to walk in the perfect will of God. That these conversations that Jesus has with the Father and with the disciple here at Gethsemane serve a reminder of our love relationship with God. If you need that prayer, I just invite you as eyes are closed to just lift up your hand and put it down and let's pray and believe God for an even greater year. A year that will see expansion not out the, on the outwards, but a year to see the expansion inwardly in our walk with the Lord. That God can just have to catch hold of us in every step of the way. Anyone else? Jesus. Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for this opportunity that once again we can folk, folk, profess our love for you. We ask in the name of Jesus for your forgiveness if we have been distracted. Forgive us if we have wandered away from the intimacy with you. We ask in the name of Jesus that God give us strength, give us grace, that we are able, oh God, to, to, to discipline ourselves. As you ask the disciple, couldn't you tarry one more hour? That we will put you first in our life and, 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 and establish the intimate relationship with you as we set time for you. We pray, Father, that God, that we will be so drawn to you this morning, that God, that we will put everything else that they will not become idols in our lives. But God, that we will be able to love our God, with all our heart, with all our might, with all our, our soul, with all our being, O oh Lord, because God, you and you alone deserve our worship. Help us, O oh God, we pray in the name of Jesus, that God, that we will rise up strong. You have demonstrated your love for us in this, in this coming week where, where we rem remember the cross and the resurrections. And God, we pray, help us, Lord, to be strong in our love for you. That we will never be the same again as we allowed your love to just, just overflow us. 
overflow us, overflows us. In Jesus' name, we pray. And all God's people say, Amen. God bless you. Amen. All right. Thank you, Pastor Stephen. You know, he really uh, framed it very nicely, you know, as we talked about the conversation in Garden of Gethsemane. And, you know, for us, if we are, you know, asking God, you know, um, God, how do I do your will? You know, it's tied so closely to that relationship that Jesus had with the Father. Because of his relationship he had with the Father, he, he did the Father's will, you know. So, as we close today's service, um, I'm just going to uh, pray. And then, uh, but before that, you know, we just want to, you know, maybe commit the friends that we want to invite for this Passion Weekend. You know, if you have a name in, in mind, if, uh, you know, a colleague, a neighbour, a friend, maybe we're just going to take this time to pray. You know, that God will move in their hearts, that God will really stir them, you know, to, to ask those deep conversations, you know, about life, about love, you know, about God. You know, let's just um, ask the Holy Spirit to just reveal that name so that in the week ahead, you know, we can just uh, reach out to them, you know, invite them to come and, and, and hear the message. Let's just pray for a while. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for um, Resurrection Sunday and, and Good Friday that we can celebrate you. And God, we know that God is more than just about us, but Lord, it's about those that you love, Lord God, that are not here. So Lord, we want to commit, Lord God, every name, Lord God, that's on the hearts of every Emmanuelite here, whether here or online, as we pray, Lord, we ask for a move of your Spirit. Lord, we ask that, God, you will stir in their hearts, Lord God, a, de a desire, a longing, a seeking for you, Lord God, for the truth, Lord God, for your love. So, Lord, we commit, Lord God, every friend, every conversation that we will have, Lord, we ask that your spirit will move. Lord, we ask that your spirit, Lord God, will, 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 will touch hearts. Lord God, will, will, will speak to hearts deeply, Lord God, that are searching for the meaning of life, that are searching for truth, and that, God, that they would find you. Lord, we pray that God, even as we invite our friends, they would say yes, that their calendars will be free, that God, they will wake up on time, that, you know, they will not have any last-minute uh, um, issues. But God, even as they come, Lord, we commit, Lord God, their soul to you, Lord God, we commit, Lord God, their hearts to you, that God, when they come, Lord God, they will hear and they will connect with you, Lord God, above everything else. And Lord, we pray, Lord God, for salvations. We pray for people to come to know you and to walk into your kingdom this uh, Passion Weekend. So Lord, we thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Awesome. All right. So what's happening Passion Weekend, right? We have uh, two services for the English service. We have the Good Friday service. Uh, it's happening at 11 here. And of course, Resurrection Sunday itself, also 11 here, okay? So we have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and maybe Friday morning, all right, to invite our friends, invite our colleagues, invite our family members to come, all right, uh, for our uh, Passion Weekend services. Alright, so thank you very much everybody. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for, for those of you who are online. We really appreciate you so much for joining in as well. So have a great week ahead and we will see you Good Friday, 11 a.m. and, Passion, and Resurrection Sunday, 11 a.m. Alright, have a great week ahead. Thank you, church.